Hello friends, thanks so much for supporting my new MTB part 1 technique video. On this episode we're just moving forward with my work. This is the SR Suntour XCRLOR uh, fork. There is nothing, nothing on the internet about servicing this one, so we are doing it. I'm showing you the features right at the beginning so that you can compare yours to this one, XCR Air Fork. As you can see, there is a rebound adjustment on the right side. This is 29er uh, and this is Boost XCR SR Suntour. Uh, in the description of this bike, it says also LOR. So it's got the lockout on the right side, the air spring on the left side, and we're gonna do the full overhaul. I I did, did manage to do it actually. So you wanna... Um, disassemble the the housing for the front brake and the front brake of course i'm just showing you that because uh, there will be one step with the q lock on the on the front wheel and not everybody know how to do it and it's super easy you just you just have to uh, learn it once and then and then you will know uh, i'm removing now the uh, hydraulic brake caliper and we're gonna continue disassembling this one from the bike and then seeing actually what's inside. I was very excited about this one. The XCR, XCM, XCR forks are quite popular from among those budget or entry-level mountain bikes and there is nothing actually about this one. I, I don't know why. So guys, here it is. If there is anything else you would do in a different way, uh, tell me. Tell me because I was doing the guesswork here, so uh, I will also sh I will also show you some mistakes I've done on the on the on the way. It will be super helpful for you because you won't make these. So I'm just disassembling now uh, the stem so that uh, the the fork will be free to go. And now this Q lock, you open this one just as a quick release, like like a quick release, and you push it. That's it. Don't overdo anything with it. It's got some nice locking uh, system. Just be gentle. That's it. This is nice thing from the Suntour. It's heavier, much heavier than the, the other through axles or quick releases even. Uh, but it's it's convenient. It's quite convenient. Okay, now I'm removing the stem and now I will be holding the frame of the bike, uh, pushing the fork uh, downwards, but it doesn't go. So it needed to, to uh, it needed some tapping. Don't hit it, tap it, tap it with the mullet. So it went right now and just hold your frame and the stem. You don't want to break those housings, those, those cables. And now we can we can proceed to the fork overhaul. There will be just one bearing uh, to be removed, and this is it. By the way, guys, this is 2,222 grams heavy weight. Now release the air. Always release the air first. Do it very slowly, otherwise it's gonna spit a lot of oil, uh, so it can damage your eyes, of course. But you'd not you maybe you don't want to lose the uh, the oil. Anyways, do it just slowly. You can also do it just through some um, like paper cloth or, so, or something. This is the rebound knob. Removing it is not that easy because you, sh you should simply pull it away, pull it out. I scratched it because it, it's quite firm. So be gentle, work, work with it slowly to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. And here you've got the 8 millimeters Allen key. And remember, you want to start with the bottom of the fork. What I did, which, which I'm not showing you, was I started from, from the upper side. Do the tapping. So have the bolt inside and do the tapping. Otherwise, it, it won't, it, most likely it won't go. It won't be uh, free to go, the, the lower legs. So same here, I'm removing the bolt just to show you the bolt, uh, but it needs to be back there, like four threads, five threads, um, so that you can actually, you won't remove the thread. I needed to do it once again here on this side. So this is how we uh, remove the lower legs. 
It's actually very easy, removing everything and the basic maintenance is super easy on this one. There is no oil here guys, no oil and very little grease, I was surprised. This is the lockout knob, uh, you remove it like this, simply working in it with, um, with a screwdriver, that's how it looks like, pretty easy. Now Santro do have their own um, tool for this one, but you can use pliers like I'm using here, there is not much torque on this one. You can also use this tool, I'm using it SPA6 from Park Tool for many many things it will also work well. You're not gonna damage anything. Just do it slowly and, and it should should work for you nice. So this one is ready to go. And now the air spring, that was the lockout, the hydraulic lockout mm, and the rebound. This is the air spring now. Uh, it's much better to use a socket. I'm using a wrench here. It's easy to scratch your fork. So be just gentle if you're doing what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. And now we just remove the air spring and the rebound with the lockout. This is the rebound and lockout combo and this is non-serviceable. So you, we're not gonna open that one. Uh, this is the air uh, spring. You need to remove this little plastic part first, otherwise it, it won't go. So have the, the bolt there and push it through and then it will go. So it's, it's very easy to, to be uh, removed. Um, actually, the whole servicing here will be very easy. So that's, that's an advantage. Very little oil and super little grease is disadvantage. There will be one, one thing you can upgrade on this one. Very easy with just a couple of bucks. You're gonna see that in a second. Uh, and at the end, I'm gonna show you how to, um, how to fix the lockout problem if you have one. Now, this is the only place, the, this is the air piston and the only place where, where the oil is. This is most likely 80 WT and it's very little, maybe 5 milliliters. So this is the cartridge, it says do not open it, it's non-serviceable, uh, it, can, it can be dangerous also because there is, there is some pressure inside there. So you only gonna clean it and grease it. This is not environmental friendly, m making non-serviceable parts, but maybe, maybe it will last forever with the fork. This is our negative spring. Uh, you can move it around here. It's uh, if you use a degreaser, uh, you can you can just clean it here. There is Allen key, four or five millimeters right there. So if you wanted to remove the spring, this is how you could do it. And this is the the other part of the uh, air chamber here. Plastic part on the on the bottom, and nothing uh, at the top. Not much grease, like nothing grease actually here. Uh, and this is our valve. This is the air valve with two O-rings. Uh, you can easily remove those and and clean those or replace. It's actually very rare when I replace O-rings. I never replace O-rings on my bikes. They just last, which is good. That was the cap. And here we have the air piston. So this is the piston. This is the upper side of the of the piston. And there is the oil. Very little oil. Probably most uh, uh, five uh, milli milliliters. Uh, the stanchions, you want to have those clean. Just clean. You don't actually put anything on, on them. And there is some grease inside. Also, not much. Some. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to regrease. These are the, the, the areas where there was put some more grease. It, it, it was put there originally. This is on almost new fork. It, it was like two kilometers, three, no, maybe more ridden. So it's still clean. Uh, this is why I'm doing it right now because I wanted to check how much oil is there. This is the place for the foam rings and there is no foam rings. It's co like, I don't know, 50 cents cost. There is no foam rings uh, on this fork. I was shocked. So you can definitely upgrade this one by putting the foam rings with the oil uh, in there. It will it will really boost the performance uh, of the fork. This is the grease uh, I'm using. This is the one from Santa, I think. Uh, I'm just regreasing all the areas where, where the grease was originally. Um, I'm not showing you all the cleaning 
stuff part because I'm not doing the cleaning, it's new, you do the cleaning. So use the greaser, clean it just as on many of my other tutorials. I'm putting some grease right here, it wasn't there originally. So if I'm doing it wrong, please let me know. I will like it, I will pin the comment, but I think it was okay to put a little bit of grease there. These stanchions, you wanna have those clean. And then uh, just a little bit of grease would just just there at the edges at the bottom. And then I found out on the left stanchion there is some plastic part which will pop out almost into my eyes. So you will see me surprised. Do 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 do. Be careful now. Boom! It's there. Some little plastic part just clean with no grease on it no oil on it really so i'm putting it back just for you to know it it's there uh, so if you clean your fork it probably will need also to be degreased and clean this this one once again is new so my my cartridge rebound and, and hydraulic lockout cartridge goes there you don't fasten it too much there is not much torque actually so just Feel it, guys. Feel it. Now mm, I'm showing you that there was no grease in there. Maybe just a little bit from that spring because the negative spring uh, is is greased, but in inside that tube there was no, almost no grease. Now don't put this plastic thing first, as I'm showing you here. Otherwise, it it, it won't be uh, it won't be possible for you to put it in into the stanchion so just regrease this one put it there because this is your air, air chamber and now you can you can assemble that plastic part I'm pushing it from from the bottom and from the from the top and that's how I did it and now I was measuring the oil it was about five milliliters guy uh, guys and it was this is the piston so make sure you do it the the good way around um, five milliliters and it's very dense most likely 80 WT there is no no manuals no one tell tells you actually what kind of oil to put there but on some other forks I know Sandor have 80 WT on some of their tutorials so most likely 80 W five milliliter liters just for the um, piston to be uh, airtight and that's it I'm regressing those um, those uh, dust seals uh, of course you can uh, you can clean those you can uh, also replace and now what I did wrong uh, I I wanted to be sure that uh, I won't have any problems uh, uh, assembling this part so I've put some pressure into the air, air chamber first, which was great for the left side of the fork, which is now right side of the fork, so the air side. It was cool. I forgot about this one, and so I don't have the thread uh, right now there. So I needed to, uh, to let the air out once again slowly, uh, and then use some smaller um, Allen key, three millimeters, I think, in order to center that thread and now I, I can thread my bolt. So that was my mistake. Uh, remember about, the, about this one as well. Uh, don't, don't over tight it, it's not super tight, it's just tight. And now the knob, don't lose it, it needs to click. Like it's very very strong click. Now how do we fix the lockout? Uh, you remove this part, this is 4 millimeters Allen key, but you can also see there is place for 5 milli millimeters, <laughs> milliliters right there. And this is the key, uh, you want to make sure that this bolt is just tight. Not super tight, but just tight. And now with the 4 milli millimeters Allen key, uh, you just lock it out and then check whether uh, it's, it's, it's fine. I should have more uh, air into the mm, air spring, but I can see the difference. Okay, it's open and then when it's locked, uh, it works so now it is in the locked position the lockout works fine so it was just that five millimeter allen, allen key to to be tightened uh, the the lever uh, on the knob you want to have it now in the lock 
locked position. There's one little, little tooth, so it should fit to your the, the, the other part, the other plastic part. Just push it through all the way. It should be tight, quite tight. And you're good to go. I don't know why, just at the beginning for the first like three, four lockouts, uh, it didn't really work very smoothly, but now uh, after that it's it's okay. And now I'm putting the pressure. I haven't found any pressure chart, but you can start with 50, 60 PSI. For my weight, 72 kilograms, that would be probably somewhere about 70, 80. But you just see your sag then and, and set it accordingly. Now the sound. Open. With no rebound. Now rebound, just a little bit. You feel and hear the difference. So I'm usually like three spins into it and lockout works. Beautifully done. Thanks guys. Bye bye.